and greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we are here for you. I'd love to share information with you to let you know that we, you and I, are responsible for our health, and we have ways, natural ways, natural ways without side effects to improve the quality of our life, the quality of our health, and to reduce the diseases. Yes, actually reduce our diseases, our sicknesses, our illnesses without drugs. Drugs are not the answer. Yes, drugs are necessary in some cases. They do save lives in an emergency. I would not want to be in an accident, car accident, or any other kind of serious accident and rely on nutrition and health or a supplement to help me overcome the accident. We need drugs. Drugs save lives, but they do not provide health. And that's what we really want. We want better health so that we have a better quality of life. Do you have a lot of aches and pains? Do you have heart conditions? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have type 2 diabetes? Are you overweight or grossly overweight. All of these conditions are conditions caused by a lack of proper nutrition, the proper vitamins and minerals, and all we need to do is change our behavior, change our choices, and 98%, almost 100%, 98%, of these so-called diseases can be reversed and can be reversed 100% if there is not too much damage done. For example, arthritis. There are a lot of natural alternatives, herbal medicines, vitamins and minerals that can alleviate the side effects of arthritis, pain, and the debility brought on by arthritis. But now if there is so much damage done because we did not listen, because we did not take advantage of a proper diet and nutrition and supplements to correct arthritis, we may have created so much damage to the cartilage, to the joint, and there may be a difficult time to reverse all that damage. So start early. The earlier you start with health and nutrition, the longer the life you'll have in a quality of life that you'll appreciate. So we're here just to share information to help you have a better understanding of how you can change your life, change your behaviors, change your choices, and have a healthier life. So today we're going to talk about natural pain relief. How much pain do you have? How many of you have pain? I would pretty much imagine almost all of America is in pain. Some kind of pain. Back pain, headache pain arthritis, all kinds of different conditions causing pain. How do you relieve that pain naturally, without drugs, without side effects? And then we'll talk about the small changes that provide big benefits for your brain. And commonly asked questions about multivitamins. We'll answer some of those questions. 
and nature's antibiotic essential oils. Oils are very, very powerful. The oils that are extracted from plants, the essential oils, are very, very powerful. And the silent killer, pancreatic cancer. Sometimes people are diagnosed with cancer of the pancreas, and in three months they're dead, unfortunately. And how do middle-aged women get a better night's sleep? So we have a lot to cover today, and I want to make sure that you get a good explanation of how we can do some of these natural things to provide better health for us overall. So the bottom line is, hey, do you have pain? I would say pretty much yes. At least one in five Americans, only, only adults, of course, but there are children too today that have pain. That's a different ball game. But one in five American adults is living with chronic pain. Chronic pain. That's a lot of pain every day. Almost 50% of older adults over the age of 50 report experiencing regular muscle pain. And are you using a prescription or over-the-counter NSAID, N-S-A-I-D, NSAID, which means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug for your pain, such as ibuprofen, aspirin, Celebrex, Advil. Americans use 30 billion doses of prescriptions and OTC inset drugs every year. 30 billion doses of drugs. One survey of patients over the age of 65 visiting their family doctor found that 96% were taking a drug, over-the-counter drug, to relieve pain. NSAID drugs cause bleeding of the stomach and kidneys, heart attacks, and stroke, and other severe damage to the kidneys. They're not safe. And yet many people believe, I think they believe, that they're safe or safer because you can buy them over the counter. You don't have to go to your doctor. You don't have to have a prescription because doctors monitor prescription drugs to see if you really need that kind of severe drug therapy. So if you can buy them over the counter, I think a lot of people feel, hey, this must be pretty safe. I don't need a prescription from my doctor. I'm my own doctor buying these drugs. And they may feel that they don't need monitoring. And so they take more than what's recommended on the label. And even just the recommendation on the label causes 16,000 deaths a year. And some of these drugs, like ibuprofen and Tylenol, cause liver damage. In fact, Tylenol is the number one drug and the number one cause of liver failure and liver Cancer, Tylenol is a very, very harsh drug. And we even give it to our kids. They have liquid Tylenol and children's Tylenol. These are very serious drugs that I believe, my opinion, they should be on prescription. Let the doctor decide what 
the patient should take and how much. There are various serious harsh drugs. But we could talk about safe and natural pain relief. Clinical trials have resulted to show that curcumin from turmeric, not turmeric, but curcumin, which is extracted from the root of turmeric. In some cases, curcumin products are 500 times stronger than turmeric. And if you take curcumin, it is a stronger anti-inflammatory than drugs. It relieves pain, muscle pain, joint pain like arthritis, headache, migraine headache pain, post-exercise pain, post surgical pain, any kind of pain, any kind. Curcumin works more effectively than drugs. And there are many trials to show that curcumin, along with another botanical herb called boswellia, those two together affect separate pathways in the body to reduce pain. And the combination of these two are more effective than the drugs, more effective than Celebrex, which is one of the strongest prescriptions that doctors commonly prescribe. Now, a comparison test show curcumin works as effectively as over-the-counter drugs and not that you have to worry about side effects. Just outstanding benefits, results. It reduces the risk of cancer. Curcumin reduce the risk of cancer, lowers blood pressure, better blood sugar levels like type 2 diabetes, Healthier liver and kidney function does not cause bleeding of the stomach. So here are some samples, or examples, I should say, from clinical research. In rheumatoid arthritis, the patients who took curcumin reduced pain and swelling more effectively than the prescription drug. 14% of patients in the drug group dropped out of the study because they had such severe adverse effects, side effects, while zero subjects in the curcumin group dropped out. There was no side effects. They had nothing to worry about. It was safe, been used for 5,000 years as a food. In a study of curcumin versus ibuprofen in arthritic patients, curcumin group had less pain and better ability to walk upstairs and walk a distance more effectively than the ibuprofen group without adverse effects. There are side effects in all drug therapy. In curcumin therapy, there are no side effects. There's no complications, no counterindications with other drugs. Safe, safe, safe. Now I talked about the two herbs, curcumin and boswellia. Well, here's a study on the combination These two herbs relieved arthritis pain more effectively than a prescription drug, and 14% of patients were pain-free after three months, 
versus 7% of the drug group. And there were no side effects in the curcumin buzzwalia group. But there were side effects in the drug group. So how do you relieve pain? Here is a fast-acting pain relief protocol. Look for a curcumin and boswellia blend. There's two herbs together. They're blended together with black sesame seed oil. A thousand milligrams of the blend once or twice daily. And you can even double that if you want to. There are no side effects, no complications, no counterindications. In clinical trials, worked as quickly and effectively as NSAID drugs. It is really extremely beneficial for chronic pain. And then curcumin, along again with boswellia, these are the two heavy lifters that relieve pain effectively. Along with DLPA, an amino acid, and natokinase, about 2,181 milligrams of this blend daily, more if needed, but this is a good starting dosage as a serving to relieve pain. You don't have to live with pain. Use some of these natural formulations to reduce pain. Now here's a small lifestyle change. Just a small lifestyle change can have a huge benefit for your brain. Now, at one time, we thought nutrition did not have an effect on our brain. It seemed like our head, our brain, our mind was separated from our body. We fed our body, but we never thought we could feed our brain. And if we lost brain cells, we thought they were gone forever. But there's some very small lifestyle changes that can have a huge benefit improving your brain function. This is a recent study. Approximately 4,500 people, men and women in their 40s, wore an activity tracker and completed detailed health questionnaires and cognitive tests. The subject of this trial, who had the most minutes spent in moderate or vigorous exercise, also had the highest cognitive scores. So that says the more you are active, the better brain function you, have, you will have. When the researchers modeled an increase or decrease in moderate to vigorous exercise, they found the subjects would theoretically see an improvement in mental function by replacing just nine minutes of sedentary activity with exercise. So just exercising nine minutes. Everybody can do that. Exercise increases blood flow to the brain, bringing oxygen and nutrients to the brain cells to keep them alive and vigorous. And exercise actually increases the levels of a protein called the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is critical for protecting brain cell activity against damage and increasing production of new brain cells. There was once thought by the medical experts that brain cells could not be renewed or we could not build new brain cells. But a recent study found that exercise doubled, doubled the brain cells in our brain. 
only by exercising. Nine minutes. Now, I love the kettlebell exercises. Kettlebell swings. Kettlebell squats. Kettlebell deadlift. Just picking it up. We don't do anything sometimes for days, but sit on a chair or couch, watch TV, play cards, play bingo, do all the things that really don't take any level of exercise or activity. And just replacing that nine minutes of sitting with exercise makes a huge benefit for your brain. So exercise, my friends. Find something you love to do. Stationary bicycle, walking, swimming, kettlebell swings, all good exercises to increase blood flow to the brain. We need to help the heart pump more blood. Now we talk a lot about multivitamins. And a lot of questions come up about taking multivitamins. So maybe these are some of the questions you've wondered about. So here are some of the answers that we came up with that would help people understand about vitamins and minerals. Should I take my vitamins with meals or on an empty stomach? Should I take them in the morning or at night? Where should I keep my vitamins? In the bathroom cabinet? Is that okay? Or in the refrigerator? Is that okay? Why is my urine bright yellow after I take a multivitamin? Do I need more than the daily value for vitamins and minerals? These are some of the questions that I receive all the time. People don't understand taking supplements, and they have questions. And I like that. I appreciate the questions because it shows that they're thinking about their health. So how about choosing a good daily multiple? Dosage is more than just one a day, one per day. Contains a full range of vitamins and minerals and more than 100% of the RDA. Nutrients are for everyone. You don't need age or gender specific formulas. We all eat the same food. We all take in the same vitamins and minerals. Women do not need different vitamins than a man. You don't need a male formula. You don't need a female formula. You don't need a kid's formula. Although, I will say for kids' formula, it makes more sense. Because the amount of nutrients for adults would not be favorable for a child. So children's formula makes more sense. And then are you sure that the nutrients in your formula are in their optimal forms for absorption and efficacy? Active forms of B vitamins and chelated minerals. Always look for a natural formula free of toxic ingredients, artificial colors, and artificial flavors. And always, I believe, my opinion, say no. No way to gummies. They contain a lot of sugar, often high fructose corn syrup, artificial colors, and they're very, very low on vitamins and minerals, especially iron. Now, let me answer some of those questions. Should I take my vitamins with meals or on an empty stomach? I suggest with meals. As you eat your food, you will eventually extract vitamins and minerals out of the food you eat. Taking a supplement will ensure that you're getting additional vitamins and minerals as well as those that are found in the food and they'll complement each other or fill in the gap 
of any missing, missing vitamins and minerals. Should I take them in the morning or at night? Well, I like to take multiple, multiple tablets. I don't believe you can get all your vitamins, all your minerals, in one tablet daily. Yes, you can list all those vitamins and minerals on the label, but they'll never, never, ever contain any meaningful levels of those nutrients that you may require for your body's health. So I divide up my vitamins and minerals. I take a product that contains all the nutrients I need in two tablets or four capsules. Capsules cannot contain as much of the nutrients because of sheer volume and the size of the capsule. For a tablet, you can pack more nutrients in a tablet formulation. So I take two tablets in the morning and two in the evening, not at night. I take two for breakfast and two for my dinner meal, with my dinner meal. Where should I keep my vitamins? Keep them where it's cool and dry, not in the refrigerator, because there's a lot of moisture in your refrigerator. Vitamins are damaged by moisture, heat, and light. So keep them where in the cupboard, away from the, not above the stove. Don't keep them in the bathroom. Keep them where it's cool and dry. Room temperature. Why is my urine bright yellow after I take a vitamin and mineral supplement? Because riboflavin, vitamin B2, is very bright yellow. And as you digest it, the yellow goes out through the urine when you evacuate your urine any time during the day. I've got to pause, my friends. I'm just looking here at the clock, and I'm running out of time for our first half hour. Don't go away. I have a lot more coming up right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally with another half hour of our program. We'll be here to the top of the hour. We're here to share with you more information on multivitamin and mineral supplements. And some of the questions that we've been asked, how to take vitamins and minerals, when to take them, where to store them. So I have one more question to answer. And the answer is, do I need more than the daily value for vitamins and minerals? I believe we do. If you take just the recommended daily allowance for vitamins and minerals, it's a very, very small amount of vitamins and minerals. We live in a different world today than the world was when they came up with a daily allowance. We live with more chemicals. In fact, we live with 70,000 chemicals a day. We come into contact with 70,000 chemicals per day. That wasn't like that 50 years ago. When a lot of this information on health and nutrition was first suggested. So I think we need more vitamins and minerals than we did 50 years ago. So I have doubled and tripled and, and I got up to four or five times the amount of vitamins and minerals in most cases. I don't think we can do it today with a one-a-day supplement. It sounds great, it sounds easy, it sounds convenient, but it does not make sense to me. We can't put all the vitamins and minerals in one tablet. It takes several tablets to have the room to get the volume of the vitamins and minerals in those tablets or capsules. It just cannot be done. A one a day, if you got all the vitamins and minerals and a meaningful level of all those vitamins and minerals in one tablet daily, it would be about the size of a golf ball. 
Now, that's not easy to swallow. But that could be a good way to do it. So instead of taking one big golf ball size, I think it's good to have a multivitamin and mineral supplement that requires two tablets daily or four capsules daily. For the manufacturers, they can't get all the vitamins and minerals in capsules as they can in tablets. Tablets are more compressed, where you have flowing powder in capsules, so you can't get as much in a capsule as a tablet. So let's talk about essential oils. All plants contain oils. Some a lot of oil and some very little oil. But they have very powerful effects. And in some cases, some of these oils are equal to an antibiotic. Every year, over 2.8 million people get sick and 35,000 people die from antibiotic resistant infection. That means over time we have prescribed, doctors have prescribed, and we have actually have some antibiotics in milk and food so we have been, I guess we, I guess you could say that we have been over-doctored, over-prescribed antibiotics for years. Doctors even prescribe antibiotics for cold and flu. 98% of all cold and flu are viral infections. Antibiotics do not do anything for viral infections. And over time, the bugs we are trying to kill with antibiotics become resistant to the treatment, to the drugs. Bugs try to survive. They try to hide. They try to build a resistance, a strength against antibiotics. So we call this antibiotic resistant infections. So some antibiotics don't work anymore. Some they keep increasing to higher levels and still do not work. So antibiotic resistant means that harmful bacteria are immune. They escape to the commonly prescribed drugs used to kill them. They have become superbugs. This happens with cancer. Cancer cells resist chemotherapy. Cancer cells have a life of their own. They get stronger. They resist chemotherapy. And in many cases, these drugs, or excuse me, these cancer cells or bugs, superbugs, become more dangerous because they can't be killed. And one of them is called MRSA. M-R-S-A. MRSA. It's the most dangerous antibiotic-resistant bacteria today. But here are some natural antibiotics that kill everything. Cinnamon oil, very strong. When tested against drug-resistant bacteria, including MRSA, E. coli, cinnamon oil had a greater potency than three commonly prescribed antibiotics. Should you take an antibiotic? Well, 
I would not. But then again, I make my own decision. And it's up to you to make your own decision. If a doctor prescribes an antibiotic, you should give it some thought as to whether or not you want to take it, and if you should take it, and how long you should take it. Some people have been on antibiotics for years. I don't think anybody should take an antibiotic for more than seven to 10 days. And maybe they may need one or two courses. But that's between you and your physician. But there are many of these essential oils that are as effective as antibiotics. So when combined with antibiotics, cinnamon oil increased their effectiveness by up to eight times. So that shows you can use these natural medicines along with your prescription drug and even make them more effective. Thyme, the spice or the herb, T-H-Y-M-E, and oregano were found effective against 15 different strains of harmful bacteria including E. coli and 16 strains of yeast, including Candida albicans. In a test evaluating the antibacterial effects of six different plant essential oils against 25 different bacteria, the most effective were thyme, oregano, and clove oil. I would throw in cinnamon too. All are very, well, these four are the most highly effective against bacteria. So how do you use the essential oils? These essential oils, when studied in Europe, found that they could be used orally at a certain level of potency and based on time, T-Y-M-E. So take about 75 milligrams of cinnamon, thyme, clove, and oregano oil once or twice a day. If I had a bacterial infection, I would take 75 milligrams of this combination of four essential oils, probably three or four times a day for two or three days. I always like to jumpstart and go higher for a few days to really hit the bacteria hard and then reduce after that, you can use it for any condition related to bacterial infection, food poisoning, respiratory tract infections, sinus, ear infections, sore throat, bronchitis, urinary tract infections, bacterial pneumonia, and essential oils stay in the body longer because they're not water-soluble. They're fat-soluble. Oils have a very strong effect on killing off bacteria. So if you have a sinus infection, ear infection, sore throat, bronchitis, upper respiratory tract infections, urinary tract infections, bacterial infections, bacterial pneumonia, these oils are tremendously important and critical to reduce the infection of bacterial infection. Unfortunately, pancreatic cancer is a very difficult cancer to reverse. It's called the silent killer. 
pancreatic cancer rates actually are rising in women. Recently reported from medical research, pancreatic cancer rates in women increased by 2.4% last year, with no similar increase reported for men. Although men are more likely overall to be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer has the highest mortality rate of all the major cancers. The five-year survival rate, which is the percent of people who are still alive five years after their diagnosis, is less than 12%. Very low recovery rate of those people that have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So here's some new research on potential treatments for pan pancreatic cancer. Dr. A.J. Goyle, spelled G-O-E-L, at the City of Hope Cancer Treatment Centers, Los Angeles, California, has been studying the effects of botanical medicines on pancreatic cancer cells for over 20 years. Some of the studies that he has conducted on natural medicines, botanical medicines, he found that andrographis and berberine are both able to destroy pancreatic cancer cells. Let me say that again. He found that andrographis, A-N-D-R-O, G-R-A-P-H-I-S, andrographis, it's an herb that grows in Malaysia, Asia, India, China, the Himalayas, Nepal. And berberine, another Indian herb. But, can, but berberine can also be found in America, in Oregon grape, and also golden seal. Berberine is an alkaloid that's found in these plants and are both able to destroy pancreatic cancer cells. Additionally, when combined with traditional chemotherapy, andrographis and berberine boost the anti-cancer effects of the chemotherapy, especially in cancer cells that have become resistant to the chemotherapy drugs. Andrographis alone reduced pancreatic cancer cell development by roughly 90%. And combining andrographis with chemotherapy nearly eradicated the pancreatic cancer cells completely. While these results need to be confirmed in eventual human trials, this is very promising news on a difficult-to-treat cancer. And with the knowledge that we have on these two herbs, for those that have been, <clears throat> for those that have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, if I were that person, I would definitely take andrographis and berberine, along with the chemotherapy that the doctor has prescribed. Andrographis is one of the most powerful anti-cancer. It is almost the it is the most multitasker herb of, of any I know. It does everything. Like curcumin does everything. Curcumin and andrographis is another great, great combination to eradicate cancer cells. But I would use berberine and andrographis. About 400 milligrams of andrographis standardized at 20% of the andrographolides two, three, or four times a day. 
On the berberine, I would use a berberine extract combined with gamma cyclodextrin, which increases the absorption of this herb by several times. It would be a really interesting way to support an effective way, I should say, an interesting, effective way to support chemotherapy and help eradicate the pancreatic cancer cells completely. How about having better sleep? Especially better sleep for middle-aged women. So what is interfering with sleep? Why don't women sleep better? Why doesn't everybody sleep better? Insomnia. One of the greatest curses that everyone has to deal with. Researchers in Finland surveyed 850 women aged 42, slightly before menopause, and 16% of the participants said it was difficult to fall asleep, while 42% were excessively tired in the morning, and 60% of the women said they woke up frequently during the night at least once a week. Sleep problems in early middle age are not necessarily hormonal. Several studies have reported no connection between hormone levels and poor quality sleep. So what is causing sleep problems in middle age? Well, the most common cause of sleep problems and sleep disturbances is stress and anxiety. So calm your mind and get better sleep with ashwagandha. A study of 50 healthy older adults received either ashwagandha, 300 milligrams, standardized to 35% with analytes, the active key compound of ashwagandha, or a placebo twice daily for 12 weeks. Mental alertness on waking improved 53% in the ashwagandha group versus 38% in the placebo group. They were more mentally alert when they woke up in the morning. Sleep quality improved 57% in the ashwagandha group versus 25% improvement in the placebo group. Overall, from the study, all the doctors overseeing the ashwagandha group reported good or excellent results, and all the patients in the ashwagandha group rated their experience with a better night's sleep, less disturbance, waking up more refreshed with ashwagandha as being good or excellent. In a study of adults with stress, the same ashwagandha extract was associated with a 30% to 40% reduction in depression and anxiety scores and a 23% reduction in cortisol levels. Good night's sleep and a good deal of stress reduction when using ashwagandha. It is the number one herbal product sold in America today. Ashwagandha, because it does reduce stress significantly, and it does improve sleep, excuse me, sleep quality as well. You can't lose 
with ashwagandha. But look for a 35% extract. The 35% extract has had excellent studies to support its functions. So it contains out of 150 milligrams or 300 milligrams, 35% of that are the key active compounds. It is seven times stronger than any other ashwagandha on the market. It sells extremely well with people that are experiencing sleep problems and stress. So what more should you know about ashwagandha? Well, typical extracts are standardized to about 5%, very low. And they're not standardized, truly. But they contain somewhere between, or I should say less than 5%. 5% or lower. But most recent research has used higher standardization, like 35%. Now, I take 150 milligram dosage. I take two of those twice daily, once in the morning and then just before bedtime. Sleep like a baby. I take it with my melatonin and it works fantastically. And there are no side effects, no adverse events. Now you have something that really helps you sleep well because sleep drugs are very dangerous. They actually knock you out. You're unconscious. You're not just sleeping. People get up and they go to the office in their pajamas. They're that knocked out. Or they get up through the night and they eat and cook and bake in their sleep because they are so unconscious. They have found in the morning bread wrappers in bed, candy wrappers in bed. And they have gotten into more accidents driving into the office because they're still unconscious and it hasn't worn off yet. You won't have that with ashwagandha. Ashwagandha will put you to sleep. A phenomenal combination. And also it reduces stress. Stress keeps us up late at night. Stress causes us worry and fears. Stress, we worry because our finances are running out. Our kids are on drugs. I lost my job. My wife and I are not getting along together. Our relationships are splitting up. Kids are going off to school and I, I lost contact with them. All these things can be stressful. Jobs can be stressful. Driving in traffic can be stressful. Flying can be stressful. We live in a stress-filled world. Ashwagandha will solve your stress lower the cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone, and give you a good night's sleep. What can you want more than that? If you woke up every morning refreshed and ready to start the day because you had a great night's sleep, you have less stress, that's what health is. And you can have more of that by taking ashwagandha. I'll spell it for you. A-S-H-W-A-G-A-N-D-H-A. -A -A -A. Ashwagandha. It's commonly referred to as Indian ginseng. A phenomenal combination for stress reduction and sleep. With that, my friends, another hour has passed and we're all out of time. So I'm going to leave you, but I'll be back here tomorrow, 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. 
So I'll pray for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country.